Mark's speech is called The World's Greatest Stock Trader. It's project number two from the Entertaining Speaker Manual. It's five to seven minutes. Please help me welcome Mark Menninger. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Jesse Livermore was the world's greatest stock trader. He made millions on Wall Street. Yet his story is as sad as any Shakespeare tragedy. And I think it's a great case study of how money can't buy you happiness. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests, Jesse's story begins way back in 1877, when he was born on a small farm in Massachusetts. Now Jesse's daddy was a farmer, and Jesse's daddy wanted Jesse to be a farmer. But Jesse knew early on that farm living wasn't the life for him. <laughs> so he ran away from home at the age of 15, and he went to the big city, Boston, and he stood in front of the Payne Weber building. He needed a job, so he walked right in and asked if they had anything for him. And it turns out they did have an opening for Board Monkey. Now, Board Monkey was the guy who would read the stock quotes off the, off the ticker tape and write them on the big board so that the stockbrokers behind him could see what was going on in the stock market. And Jesse loved being a Board Monkey. He loved running around and writing down all those numbers. And an amazing thing started happening. Jesse started seeing patterns in the numbers. He started to see trends in the numbers. He could spot these trends so well that he started guessing where the numbers were going to be before they got there, and he was usually right. One of his buddies told him he was so good at it that he should be betting on the stocks. So Jesse did just that. He went down to the local bucket shop. Now, the bucket shop was where you would go to place your bets on stocks without all the inconvenience and hassle of actually owning any stocks. And back then, that was perfectly fine. These days, it's a little illegal, but <laughs> Jesse was, was, was just fine, and he started placing bets on the stocks, and he started making money. And at the age of 15, he had made $1,000, which in our money is about $20,000. And you might think a 15-year-old kid with $20,000 might be pretty happy, might be pretty satisfied with himself, maybe go out and blow it all. But not Jesse. Jesse didn't see the stock market as a way to make money. He saw it as a game that he wanted to win. So he kept playing the stock market. He kept, he kept betting in the bucket shops, and he did it for years. He ended up taking so much money from the bucket shops that they all banned him for a lot. <laughs> but that was fine with Jesse because they were too small time for him anyway. He took all of his money and he went up to New York City and set himself up as a full-time stock trader. And he was successful right away. He created, created systems and rules for himself to follow so that he would consistently make money in the stock market. And then came the crash of 1907. Jesse saw it coming, and he shorted the market all the way down. And he made $3 million at, at the end. Now he was, you know, in today's dollars, in today's money, that's a lot of money. And he, he was very successful. And you might think, well, gosh, you're in your 20s, you've got millions of dollars, call it good, right? Maybe retire. But not Jesse. He was in this like a game. He thought it was a game he could win. And not long after that, Jesse started breaking his own rules. He started taking advice and tips from other people. He started trading things he didn't understand, commodities like cotton, and he lost everything he had made. He eventually went deep into debt and eventually went bankrupt. But then came World War I, and Jesse saw the markets trending up, and he rode that trend up. And then he saw the markets trending down, and he rode that trend all the way down. And he made back all the money he lost, and he paid off all of his debts, and he was once again a successful trader. Then came the 
crash of 1929. Jesse saw it coming. And he shorted the market all the way down. And at the end, it made more than $100 million, putting him well into billionaire territory in today's money. And Jesse was on top of the world. He, he owned mansions all over the world, fully staffed with servants 24 hours a day. He had a steel-hulled yacht that he liked to sail from the U.S. to Europe whenever he felt like going on vacation. And this time, Jesse learned his lesson from the first time when he lost all his money. He created annuities and trusts to protect his money, millions of dollars worth of money, so that in case he ever lost all of his money again, he, he and his family would be able to live in wealth for the rest of their lives. And you might say, now, Jesse, you've done it, right? You've won. You've conquered the market. But Jesse didn't feel like he won. And wouldn't you know it? He started losing all of his money until it was all gone. And then one day, the day before Thanksgiving, in 1940, Jesse walked into a cloakroom to a fancy hotel, took out a gun, put it to his head, shot himself. They found a note in his pocket written to his wife saying, I'm unworthy of your love. I'm a failure. You see, Jesse thought the stock market was a puzzle he could solve, and his goal was to conquer the market. But that was his problem. His goal was unattainable. The market was bigger than Jesse Livermore. The Greek ph philosopher Epictetus said, there's only one way to happiness, and that is, you must cease worrying about things that are outside the power of your will. I think if Jesse had followed that advice, he would have lived a much longer and happier life. That's just